Now, he's a very funny comedian. He's traveled all over the country. He lived in New York City for nine years performing. Now, he's one of my favorite working stand-up comics that there is today. You might have seen him on Extra with Mario Lopez. Give a big, warm round of applause for Dan McCoy! <laughs> Thank you, thank you for the support, I appreciate it. Give it up for Dwayne, too, Dwayne. No, not like that, I meant sexually. Give it up for Dwayne. He could use some. You can find him online at meetmeetymen.hpv backslash penicillin. This was originally going to be a video, but uh, we didn't have the budget for it, uh, so it turned into just being a, a CD for iTunes and Amazon and stuff. And uh, now that I'm at the venue, I think it's totally appropriate because uh, <laughs> there's a great Fisher Price light show going on here. I feel like if Anne Frank had a light show, this would be her light show. It's really, I don't know. I grew up in the 80s, generation where you could stab a classmate and still graduate on time. You know what I'm saying? No child left behind. We didn't have that. We, we left a lot of kids behind. Seriously. We got that don't take candy from strangers speech, that lecture. We actually got that. You know who else got that, though? The strangers. It's not a hard code to crack. You're just like, hey, kid. I don't have any candy. Get in the fucking truck. I, I don't know. I said I don't have candy. What are you, stupid? Get in. My balls are dry. And the... It goes downhill from there. We're easing into it. Seriously. Then they'd be like, if you're getting picked on, say this. So you'd be like, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words you'll never... He's got a point. Everybody grab a rock. <laughs> that was the 80s. I was born in 1980. I was born... I'm the same age as AIDS. <laughs> I am. Not nearly as popular. <laughs> Wish I had that popularity. I don't know. Growing up, remember being a kid? Your parents couldn't make you do anything with no reasoning whatsoever. Why? Because I said so. That always worked, right? Yeah. Danny, siphon the sewage out of the septic system with a straw. What? Why? Because I said so. Could you imagine being treated that way as an adult? Just like, oh, Mr. McCourt, your son has hepatitis. What? Why? Because I said so. <laughs> I don't know. It's a generational difference. I mean, younger kids, toys were different. Today they have these virtual seizure-inducing overstimulators. We had blocks, gray splintering cubes, like playing with yard work. You needed a tetanus shot just to play with it. Like somebody swept up a furniture factory. Merry Christmas, kid, lumber. Gonna play with lumber. We had sit and spin. That was the name of the toy and the directions. <laughs> Here you go, Danny, sit and spin. What do I do? Fucking sit and spin. That's how you were conceived. I don't know, I'm sitting there at four. It's not unlike being a raging alcoholic at the age of four, getting the spins. We made our own toys. I uh, made a sailboat. I took a saw to a two by four in our garage when I was four because we could still do that because nobody cared about our welfare. <laughs> I made a sailboat with a nail for the mass, cloth for the sail. I played with it for like five years, just a fucking spiked two by four. That was one of my toys. Like, I don't know why Danny's not doing well in school. Maybe it's because I come home to clean your room. I just walked in. Give me a sit. It's a mess. That's it. I need to sit and spin. <laughs> Kids today have cell phones. It's totally different. We used to have to call the home phone and deal with the parents. 
Just like, you remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was rough. You had to be polite to them. You know, like, hey, Mrs. Baxter, can Kathy come out and smoke pot? <laughs> Could she come out and reject my sexual advances till 3 a.m.? I don't know, hang on, cat, dance horny, and he has drugs. <laughs> She'll be right there. Thank you, Mrs. Baxter. Kids today, text message. They have no social acuity whatsoever. Seriously. They'll start a conversation with you, then just leave in the middle of the conversation they started. I got a text like, hey, Dan, what's going on? I'll be like, nothing much. You want to hang out? Then you don't hear from him for two weeks. Like, sorry, I bought a dog. It's bullshit. I got this text about a year and a half ago, middle of the night, like 2 a.m., didn't recognize the number. This actually happened verbatim. I open up the text, it just says no. That's comforting. Unsolicited disapproval. So I wrote back, I don't take no for an answer. <laughs> yeah. You could send a text on to the atmosphere like it's Facebook, you know? Just do it. Go home for fun. Just text a random number. I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm not having an abortion. <laughs> People be like, I think you have the wrong number. Be like, sorry, I'm drunk. <laughs> I don't think you should be drinking. I don't think you should be telling me how to drive my car. Yeah, pull over and get an abortion. What is this, Mexico? No, wrong number. You already said $200 for the meth, motherfucker. No, wrong number. This is Dave. No names, moron. Thank you. Appreciate it. What else? People put you on speakerphone? I hate that. By a round of applause, who hates getting put on speakerphone? I hate it. It's the worst. Let it be known that it's going to be out there on iTunes and wherever. Just stop putting people on speakerphone. I ruin it immediately. Like, my friends are like, Dan, uh, I, I'm driving right now. I, I got you on speakerphone. I'm like, there's no fucking Latinos in the car, is there? <laughs> Okay, Dan, you are off speakerphone. <laughs> there used to be pay phones. You guys remember pay phones? Yeah. There were 25 cents, then there were 50 cents, then they disappeared like a hooker. Just, yeah, that's what it was. And you could make collect calls. You could call somebody and bill them. This was every day in middle school for me. Hello, you have a collect call from Mom, it's me, I'm at CBA, pick me up, don't accept the charge. Do you accept the charges? Now! It's <laughs> the so way you beat the system. We don't own stock in at and I don't know. That was my mom. I moved back in with my parents recently. I'm using the word recently very loosely. Uh, I moved back in with my folks. They're great people. Uh, they have mobility issues, though. Uh, they can't go grocery shopping because I take their car without asking. It's kind of hard to get milk when your car's at my pill dealer's house. Seriously. Living with your folks as an adult, you could have conversations so counterproductive they could lower your sperm count. It's unreal. Here's a regular one. I'm going to bed, but you will not be blank in the afternoon. Look, nothing good can come from me being conscious. So it's either take 14 Ambien or set shit on fire. By the way, I bought a new white noise machine that sounds like lesbians fucking don't walk in. I don't mute my porn, man. That's, I'm a grown adult. Um, shit. Here's an annual one around this time of year. My mother, why don't you get a job at the state fair? Mom, when carnivals metastasize, they turn into state fairs. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, 
That's just like asking me, hey, you wanna go put sawdust on barf? No? You wanna go hand out softballs to drunk people? People too drunk to operate softballs? No? You wanna go sweep up cigarette butts for a local country music band? No? I don't work at the state fair because I'm not qualified. I'm not drunk, my parents aren't related. I've never stabbed a rat with a nail on a stick. I've never lived in a house with brakes. Like, Mexicans aren't stealing my jobs. I don't buy food at a garage sale. I could go on. It's ridiculous. I appreciate that. My dad's retired, he's a writer. Uh, My father retired, he was a doctor. Uh, Well, like the doctor, those doctors, uh, I should know this. Those doctors that exploit young, naive people, um, (laughs) professor, that's it. So, (laughs) professor. He was in languages, he always spoke to us as though we had a doctorate in linguistics. (laughs) Us as in um, my sister and I. And I can prove it, because when I said us as in my sister and I, it should have been my sister and me. So, (laughs) clearly, I live with somebody in the languages department. Uh, I remember we were driving through Hoboken in a station wagon, so that puts you in the time frame. And my mom pointed out the window, my dad grew up in Hoboken, Mom pointed out the window at a nice brownstone. She's like, that's where Frank Sinatra grew up in. My dad was like, kids, your mother's a veritable font of misinformation. (laughs) To which I said, I'm five. (laughs) Yeah. Couldn't you just get drunk and beat us like a well-adjusted family? As a kid, though, if you have kids, the easiest way to figure out how to waste your life, and this applies to all mothers, just go up to your mom and say, Mom, I'm bored. She'll be like, why don't you go organize your button collection according to size and color? Why don't you go check the Encyclopedia Britannica for mistakes? They make mistakes, you know. Was I a mistake, or are you just not putting any ideas into this? Like, I, I don't know, when I have kids, I hope my kids come up to me, Dad, I'm bored. There's a can of gas in the garage. Keep it away from the house. <laughs> Dad, Dad, I'm bored. You have an aluminum baseball bat. Go break something. Destroy it. Go steal the mail from the neighborhood. You're young enough to get away with that. There's no reason to be bored. I don't know, I love my family. I wanna go on to Ancestry.com to figure out my lineage. Their commercials are terrible. I don't know who's marketing them. Stupid commercial, if you've seen them, it was like, this whole time I thought I was white. Turns out, I'm white, yep. (laughs) Just like everybody else on TV. So, it's a social statement. I don't know, I want an honest, Ancestry.com commercial, something a little more racy, you know? Something like, I went on to Ancestry.com and I was surprised to find out my great-grandfather raped a bearded midget on a hot dog cart so gypsies could steal wieners. (laughs) Then he sold the afterbirth at a flea market to clan members. My great-grandmother's the first known person to get pregnant by giving a (laughs) blowjob. My... My uncle intentionally asphyxiated his bottleneck goiter head in the ass of a three-legged Clydesdale at a Budweiser rodeo. My fucking aunt bit the head off a snake in a Pearl Jam video, then ran a muck stab in quadriplegics at a breathing tube convention. She was found hanging nude from a jungle gym at an orphanage. My grandmother drowned a nursery in a sewage bog on Christmas, and she was married to the original guy who fucked the AIDS monkey. And I'm Scottish. I like this town. Uh, I'm from Syracuse. I live in Syracuse. 
It's a third tier city. We're not like a real city. You know, you need a baseball team to be a real city. Yeah. And uh, before anybody yells, the Syracuse Sky Chiefs don't count. <laughs> See, I can never play minor league baseball because how do you admit to that shit at a cocktail party? Oh, what do you do? I'm a baseball player. What team do you play for? The uh, Price Chopper Triscuits? <laughs> we were the Bugles the type of team where they sing the national anthem and then the announcer gets on. What a fine day for a ball game. Okay, the first base is a fire hydrant. Second base is a traffic cone. It's the type of team where you wind up, you hit a home run, you run the bases, and then you pay for the window that you broke. It's the Sky Chiefs. I don't know. Uh, if you want to find out more about Syracuse, go onto the Wikipedia page. Uh, it's very informative. True story, the second sentence, Syracuse is the largest U.S. city with the name Syracuse. <laughs> A literate person wrote that. Just like, uh, honey, I know where we're going on vacation in the country's largest Syracuse. I bet you they got one of them robotic stop signs. I, uh... <laughs> I'm going to finish the article on that language. Like, Syracuse is located alphabetically just outside of Sacramento. <laughs> Our uh, oldest known resident was born before tomorrow. <laughs> Local pastimes do not include writing. <laughs> Despite my father who lives in Syracuse. He is a writer. But um, that was tangential. We're editing that out. Um, <laughs> No, I will vote Syracuse this, though. Syracuse is the nicest city I've been to where I still feel comfortable littering. <laughs> you know? Just flick a cigarette butt. Dude, what are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry, are we in Buffalo? <laughs> no, we're not. Stop crying. What are you, Native American? <laughs> got a short story. I was, in a, I was in a bad neighborhood in Syracuse, which really doesn't narrow it down. <laughs> I was in a bad neighborhood. South Salina, if anybody's listening. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I was uh, in my car, middle of summer, windows down, and I, I saw a pizza guy, and he got gunned down in an intersection. And uh, I know you guys are thinking, this is a veritable font for comedy, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> to quote my dad. No, he got gunned down in the intersection. I didn't realize this, but I have the instincts of a jello mold in hell. I'm just, like, shaking and sweating. I, di I didn't know what to do, so I just drove through the crossfire. Just, like, through the bullets, like a really aggressive car wash. <laughs> And on the next block, on the corner, there was a bouncer outside a strip club. So my window was down. I was like, hey, there's a guy on the next corner shooting people. He's like, well, what do you want me to do about it? <laughs> uh, he's coming this way, you know? He's like, well, what does he look like? He'll be the guy shooting people. <laughs> That's verbatim in actual conversation I've had. Couldn't believe it. You, I couldn't have found less concern, even in New York City. Hey, there's a guy in the next corner shooting people. Ah, oh, yeah, it's Nick. He shoots people. That's <laughs> what he does. We sell calzones. That's what we're doing on this corner. You want a calzone or you want to get shot? A calzone, I guess. I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm just surprised the guy wasn't even more careless. Just go up to the bouncer. Ah, oh, there's somebody getting murdered with a handgun on the corner. Uh, yeah, we have a $20 cover. <laughs> no, he just killed a pizza guy. No outside food. <laughs> no, I mean, you should take cover. We are taking cover. It's $20. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> what do you do in that situation? Do you talk to the gunman? Like, dude! What are you thinking, man? This is a seedy neighborhood. You can't just shoot people. This isn't a school. You, you know? 
Think of the customer. It's one thing if the delivery driver is cold, but when the pizza is cold, I will not stand for it. Uh, I don't online date mostly because I'm happy with the sex life I have with my computer. Don't want to turn it into a middleman. Plus, I don't know if you've done it. It's not really the best crop of people. Uh, I don't know how you start that conversation. So, do you think the doctors can remove all of it? <laughs> or the uh, ever heartwarming, so how long have you been pregnant? Yeah. It's weird, weird. Do you guys want to, I don't know if I'm going to keep this. Uh, I, uh, well, they say uh, women like guys with a sense of humor. Do you want to hear my profile? I set up a profile for material. You guys want to hear it? Yeah. All right. Okay, about me. HIV positive, condom avoiding amateur prostitute. Let me explain, you can't be an amateur prostitute. Prostitutes make money. On parole for indecent exposure at a t-ball game. Hobbies include not responding to messages, drunk driving in school zones, bathing in McDonald's restrooms, insulting people with eating disorders, and assaulting the handicapped. I dropped out of high school my third time through freshman year. I'm illiterate, and I'm dictating this message to some Jew at knife point. <laughs> I like porn, PCP, and probably your mother. I've never met my parents, but I was raised by a pedophile until he found me unattractive at age nine. I, th I think joining the army and spending hours on Facebook are both intelligent ideas. The only reason I'm not an anti-Semitic racist bigot is because I don't really understand what those words mean. Uh, I'm guessing that I'm the product of rape because clearly I don't come from an attractive lineage. I can already tell I don't like you. I'm a 35-year-old <laughs> virgin and I would have several face tattoos by now if I could afford them. I don't like puppies, charity, Barack Obama, fiscal solvency, female voters, paramedics, music. I don't like food, people, green lights, Wi-Fi, vacation, central air conditioning, or free pizza. I don't own a shirt. I think we can all agree that Drew Carey is truly inspirational. I can't hold a conversation, I never hide erections, and I want to meet your parents. <laughs> Message me and win a chance to go fuck yourself. All right. Anyway, thank you. I don't know, guys look for pickup lines. Don't use pickup lines unless you've written them yourself. Be original, you know? Like... Baby, if I could redistribute the alphabet, I would give you HPV. <laughs> Sound romantic? I don't want AIDS. Uh, yeah, 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 good. So I gave up uh, sex and intravenous drugs. They were equally difficult to give up because I don't do either of them. So, I don't know. Uh, I was sexually active a lot in college and I got tested the way guys get tested, where you talk to your girlfriend like, hey, baby, we should get tested. And she does, but you don't. You're like, let me see your results. You're clean? Okay, we're fine. No, I'm clean. I'm clean. It should be fine. No, you'd have something if I had something by now. You know, has anybody in here, any guy had the Q-tip test? See, we don't get tested. <laughs> Told you. Basically, if you haven't had a uh, hat in college, uh, Nurse Kevorkian comes in and she's like, let me show you how I can make cotton feel like razor blades. She was like, do you want to stick it in or do you want me to stick it in? I was like, I don't want either of us to stick it in, which is what I should have said a month ago. 
but I have a drinking problem. She's like, do you want to stick it in or do you want... I can't stick it in. I would sooner sneeze with my eyes open onto Mike Tyson's face while saying the N-word. It's impossible. So she took my junk and jammed it in there and I screamed the same four-letter word that got me into this mess. She was like, you'll get your results as, you, as soon as you've convinced yourself your crabs have syphilis. You know, make sure not to sleep between now and then. Yeah, it won't be a problem. And, uh, and uh, we don't validate parking, but your car's been told. We, sh- we would have told you sooner, but we want you to get used to having bad news. So I uh, went back a week later to talk to the doctor And I don't know if you've been tested. Uh, They don't test for anything relevant. They really don't. Anything permanent, they don't test for. I went to the doctor, he's like, oh, well, you don't have leprosy. Oh, great, what a relief. Because I was the guy who blew Andy Dufresne the day he broke out of Shawshank. Seriously. Yeah, yeah, it's part of the deleted scenes. The original title was Shitty Boner. It was gay porn narrated by Morgan Freeman. Either get busy raping or get busy dying. Um, He was like, "Uh, you don't have polio. I was like, well, do I have dwarfism? Do I have gunshot wounds to the face? Do I have amputated limbs? Did you count all of them? Do I have death? Did you check for death? Is that something I have? You're a brilliant doctor, really. I bet you know the whole alphabet. So, uh, I don't know about the medical industry. I'm on uh, Zyprexa. It's an antipsychotic because I'm fucking ill, yo, mentally. And um, I remember when they told me, they were like, Dan, you're going to have to go on some pretty heavy antipsychotics. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and repress that. When was the last time you were on your rocker? Because you're a monocle short of Mr. Peanut. Seriously. Dan, is this glass half full or is it Satan? How deep, you gotta be honest, how deep are you going with the Q-tips? We need to know. Don't worry, Dan, one in 13 people are psychotic. The other 12 are flammable. So, thanks. Yeah, thank you. I, uh, it was tough. As a result, I always had a, a tough time keeping a job. I don't know. I worked as a waiter for a long period of time because that's what I went to school for, liberal arts. Um, the last job I had was at a grocery store that had the unique distinction that they would hire people, and everybody worked there for the rest of their life until they died. It was like grocery Auschwitz, seriously. Just, not to get too dark, it was just healthy, virile young men were coming up to the service desk like, the tribe no longer needs me. I've served my purpose here on Earth. Then they just wander into produce and die. It's like, dude, go home. You don't understand, Dan. Aisle 5 is home. Try the Kool-Aid. It's to die for. I remember during orientation, they're like, that's Kevin, he's been here 42 years. That's Brendan, he's been here 31 years. That's Sydney, he's been here 17 years. How old is he? 16. (laughs) Seriously. I was like, I don't see any lobotomy scars at all. They were like, it's (laughs) non-invasive. I took a job and went to my shrink, and I was like, "Uh, there's a gun in my mouth more than my toothbrush. She was like, go on, go on. (laughs) All right, well, you know when you wake up in the morning? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like when that happens. (laughs) Can you fix that? So she put me on whatever medications to where I'm chemically incapable of feeling sad. It's impossible. I could be going into surgery. They got the mask on. My doctor's like... Well, Mr. McCourt, we're going to have to amputate your penis. Uh, I'd just be like, is that going to affect my abilities to watch infomercials at three in the morning? <laughs> yeah, actually, yes, it will. <laughs> okay. So I, I did the same thing. 
which was I fight clubbed my former employer. I was having a problem with one of the managers, and uh, this bit's going to get pretty offensive, so I'm going to make the distinction because he's going to hear this at some time. I'm talking not about the head chef, John. I'm talking about the bald, pinheaded chef, John. I had a problem with him. I guess I pushed his buttons, and uh, he flipped out in the store. And uh, I'm a little manipulative, so I went into human resources the next day. What happened was uh, we all agreed that it would be in everyone's best interest for them to pay me to stay home. That's how my comedy career got corporate sponsorship. <laughs> it was great. But it was hard to get berated by that guy because uh, I, I'm imbalanced. You know, I've been institutionalized. I have my shoelaces back and I'm on stage, which is good. But yeah. <laughs> there's so many things I wanted to say to the guy. Like, first off, John, don't speak to me. Second rule in this club, don't fucking speak to me. You know, chain of command, John. You know what comes before you? Fuck. It goes fuck, then you, then suck, then my, then dick. Your jurisdiction is over suck my dick. Fuck and off pretty much tell you what to do, you little fetal alcohol victim. Chef at a grocery store? It's prepackaged food. Who's your mentor, Captain Crunch? Seriously. You're not a real chef. What department? Aisle five? What cuisine? Microwave popcorn? They have a button for you. You couldn't reheat a thermometer. I, I, I'm talking to a guy whose formal training is in vegetables. So I gotta be honest, I'd rather be talking to an actual fucking vegetable. You're dumb enough to chase a boomerang and slow enough to catch it, you know? And who forged your resume? Because you seem illiterate, and chef begins with a CH, but it sounds like an SH. I'll give you an example. I unloaded the machine gun, which ricocheted off the quiche, killing the charlatan charading as a chef, clean as a machete, and to my chagrin, we toasted champagne. <laughs> This goes out to everybody who wants to say that to their boss. Just everything you've wanted to say to him. Like, John, you're dumber than what I left in your wife. Honestly, you, you have the intellect of a beach sardine. Go play Russian roulette with a shotgun, all right? Don't have any regrets, though. That's your parents' job, you know? You have 99 problems because your IQ is one. Seriously, you're dumb enough to die from a suicide attempt. Jury duty avoids you. Shouldn't you be landing on shit right now? Honestly, I, on a scale from one to 10, how high can you count? You're the reason evolution is a theory. Go choke on one of my kidney stones. You're, you're so unfuckable, they can make you a square on the AIDS quilt. If, oh, it gets a little dark. It gets darker. If ISIS beheaded you, they would blur your face. ISIS, they're a veritable font of comedy. I gotta stop. I gotta stop calling back to the, uh, back on track. Uh, ISIS, uh, they need to be stopped. I'll make it more palatable. All right, we'll make it palatable. Italian ISIS. All right? What's your favorite size, small, medium, or Ariana Grande? That's only a month old, right? ISIS attack. I wrote a street joke. You want to hear it? Yeah. All right. What's the difference between a gay guy and an Ariana Grande concert? One bangs in an end, and the other ends in a bang. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. ISIS, they need to be stopped. Seriously, how many people have they killed now? 11? Something like that? For over a decade, we, the U.S., has been liberating the Middle East 
of the tyranny of homeownership and running water and family members. You know, if you're happy and you know it, find your arm, all right? Quit bleeding on your rubble. For freedom, quit bleeding on your rubble. The terrorists hate our freedom, so we're gonna liberate them. If I was a terrorist, they hate our freedom, so we're gonna free them. If I was a terrorist, I'd have been like, we, uh, we hate your water parks, we hate your models, we hate Italian sports cars and money and infinity pools. I don't know, I think ISIS would be more prolific Look, this stuff needs to be said because we all oppose the war. So it should be part of contemporary dialogue. But the good news is uh, 200,000 Iraqi civilians no longer oppose the war, but there are many who have yet to be murdered. So, yeah, it's too bad. I know, it's terrible. We shouldn't be doing that. Could you imagine, like, they... uh, it, they'd be more prolific if they didn't give like a 45 minute lecture before killing people. They have like a PowerPoint going on and stuff. <laughs> Could you imagine if our soldiers had to do that? Like, hey, my name's Daryl and I'm gonna shoot this dude for financial aid. Go Bulldogs, <laughs> you know? All right, we'll lighten the mood. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am straight laced like a Bill Cosby drink. <laughs> Yeah, little old, but I didn't have, uh, about a year old, I didn't have time to record it last year, so it's going on now. Deal with it. I will. Uh, uh, does it, he doesn't wait for consent, so technically, that makes him the only comedian I know of who is not looking for approval. Seriously. Remember, like, how many women came forward about Bill Cosby coming on to forward? That number went up quicker than the national debt. You're just like, it can't be that big. It's that big? Are you kidding me? Is anybody doing anything about it? At least the national debt includes interest. Bill Cosby doesn't give a fuck if you're interested. He could have kids all over the country. Was Ghost Dad a documentary? Seriously. He should team up with Michael Richards, like the odd couple. I'm a racist, he's a rapist. You know, I heard a statistic that 80% of sexual assault victims know the perpetrator. And at first I was like, that number seems a little high. And then I was like, 80% of the public watched the Cosby show. So that must have been odd down at the precinct, though. I'm not making light of this. It needs to be exposed. It would probably pretty weird down at the precinct where they're like, did you get a look at the guy? Yeah, I did. What did he look like? Bill Cosby. <laughs> the suspect looked like Bill Cosby? Yeah, it looked like fucking Bill Cosby because it was Bill Cosby. <laughs> well, how do you know? He said, hi, I'm Bill Cosby. <laughs> Are you thirsty? <laughs> then the next thing I remember, I was getting groggy lying next to Bill, and I was like, hey, why was one of the Huxtable daughters white? And then I woke up naked next to Dr. Huxtable, like, ah, that's why they had a white daughter. So, do you guys not remember the show? A little too edgy? Should I back it off a little bit? Well, look, um, I don't know. He was never one of my favorite comedians. He's not even one of my favorite rapists. Like, (laughs) above him is, like, Tupac, Mike Tyson, Kobe Bryant. Uh, Woody Allen for the reverse affirmative action vote, and then Cosby's way down on the list. Does anybody believe he's innocent? Anybody? No. Even a little bit? No. He has to have some innocence. He stole so much of it. <laughs> All right. You got through the hard part. Thank you for staying with me. Thanks. Uh, my favorite band is Fish because I have a drug problem. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I got suckered into going to the show when I was 16. My friends were like, we're going to a fish concert, want to come? I was like, not a chance in hell. And they're like, Dan, we value your friendship and want to share this experience with you. I was like, I don't need friends. They're like, Dan, there's going to be a lot of LSD at the show. I was like, all right, what time are we leaving for the show? And uh, I don't know. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the band Fish, they're a jam band. A jam band is any band that's unprofitable yet can still somehow afford drugs. 
Popular jam bands include no one. There's no such thing as a popular jam band. <clears throat> I'm gonna clear my throat for this one. Rusted Root, did you say they were popular? Yeah, they were popular in 92 for like a week. <laughs> did you say Rusted Root? I'm not gonna pick you up. Who's, you said Rusted Root? Uh, no, they were a jam band. Yeah, they were a jam band. Yeah. Yeah, but there are still no popular jam bands. You notice how they don't exist anymore? Exactly. Yeah. Actually, if you want to listen to them, I think one of them works at Walmart at the <laughs> third register. Go to the third register. And anybody familiar with his work, you just tell him to send me on my way. That's a direct quote. Yeah, that's what happens to One Hit Wonders. I have a weird story about Rusted Root. I went to summer camp, and the, the, one of the counselors was weird. Um, not like molesty weird. It was just weird. And uh, he knew the whole band, Rusted Root. So we used to listen to the whole album about a year before they became famous. And then, like, ten years later, I reflected back on it. And I was like, oh, that, that counselor... He was just on pot the whole time. That makes sense. He works at a summer camp. Okay. So I, I felt like I found him early. But um, Fish was, uh, I love that band. Um, I don't know. I would describe them, I'll try to do this in one breath. Fish fans are a bunch of burnt tweak freaks, more cracked out than the Liberty Bell, Bell's Palsy, Belladonna, binging, belligerent, shiftier than a jester's bell in a Bellevue psych ward, ill will, pill filled, unskilled, grilled cheese feasting, beastly, yeast infected, future dead on arrivals in a goddamn portage on sick sociopathic, syringe sharing, syphilitic, sore speckled spectacles. Oh. All right. See, during rehearsal, I got in one breath. I couldn't make it. I don't know. I'm out of shape. In other words, my type of people. My type of people. I love them. You know, ask 100 fish fans to describe fish. You'll get 100 different answers. Describe fish. Well, man, fish is like, uh, it's like 1% perspiration, 99. What's that? Oh, fish. You don't want this fish, honestly. And I'm just saying, I mean, I can't tell you. I'm just saying, you may have a heart condition. I mean, there's a lot of drugs. If you don't want this fish, you need to stop bathing. You'll probably start playing hand drums. You'll be disowned by your family. You just follow around like the Grateful Dead burnout to accomplish nothing. But you eat it on Sundays? That was very pertinent. Thank you. I'm glad that's going on my CD. Um, uh, so they'd be like, uh, describe fish. And they'd be like, uh, fish is like synergy meets harmony meets melody meets... Can I have a cigarette? <laughs> Is a painting of, I did of a square upside down. <laughs> I would describe Fish as the best musicians on earth playing the worst songs ever written. <laughs> I could say that. They're my favorite band. I've seen them a hundred times. I'll give you an example. Here's one of their lyrics. It's not even close to one of their worst lyrics. We have a saxophone because we have a band and we have saxophones in our band. What would a band be without saxophones? <laughs> they do it a little more musically, but I would be embarrassed to sing that at an open mic, much less to 100,000 people, especially when your band doesn't even have saxophones. <laughs> you know? What would a band be like without saxophones? Your fucking band, Fish. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And people, you know, you may say, Dan, it's very irresponsible to take 12 hits of acid at a rock concert when you're 16, and maybe I have the IQ of a carrot, but I would never take 12 hits of acid at a concert. I would take 12 hits of concert at an acid, feel the alphabet, watch dinner, eat a movie, listen to the sunset, and wake up in handcuffs. That's how I party. You know, 
like erectile dysfunction, I don't fuck around. I treat acid like credits in a community college. I take 12 and I drop out. We got pop fans in here? There's no cameras, yeah? All right. Well, uh, habitual use daily? Yeah. Yeah? Of course. Do you do it like when you wake up and do it? Yeah. Like immediately when you wake up? Yes. Are you employed? <laughs> barely. Barely employed. What did he say? I said I'm an airline pilot. Oh. Well, there's been worse. <laughs> It's been better. They made a movie about it. Sully Sullenberger. A big name. Uh, I hope I didn't retire after that because I... Look, Sully Sullenberger... By the way, I watched this out of my apartment uh, in Union City, New Jersey. We had an apartment with a skyline view in New York. And uh, my girlfriend called me. She's like, look out the window. There's a plane floating down the Hudson. Um, so I got my binoculars and... There's a plane floating by with people on the wings and stuff. And I was like, this is crazy because uh, it's negative 20 degrees outside. <laughs> and there's people in the water. Um, so, but he saved everybody. Everybody lived. It was a great story. I didn't see the movie, but it's inspirational. I support that. I just hope he didn't retire after that. He should have done that, been like, you know, I'm not a hero, I just didn't want to die too, so, you know, I landed a plane safely, now we can negotiate my salary. <laughs> I think I have some leverage here, you know, and if not, I'll just go on make a public statement, they don't want my services, they don't like how I save lives, you know, <laughs> you know. We only have so much room. Did you get the, you didn't get the baggage out in time. You know, you saved the lives. We have to recoup them for all those laptops. What were you thinking, Sully? So uh, pot smoking, I don't know, I can't smoke pot. It makes me paranoid and uh, it makes me really uncomfortable. It's ubiquitous though. Uh, I don't drink alcohol and I don't smoke pot. But I'm open to anything else, and I have money, so talk to me after the show. And, uh, yeah, pot dealers are the used car salesmen of the drug world. Like, every week is better than the previous week. Seriously, it's like, you know, the shit I got this week, bro, is fire. It's unbelievable. The shit I gave you last week is garbage compared to this. I wouldn't use it for smoke signals. Just botanical cancer drenched in PCP. Everybody went blind. But... The shit this week, Barack Obama smokes this shit. He does. And they have to name it something different. You know it's stepped on by like 30 people before it gets to you. You know, and they name it something different. It's just marketing. It's all THC. But they have to be like, this shit here, man, they call Cassius Clay. You take enough hits to the head and you get Parkinson's. <laughs> This shit here, they call the epidural. It makes you numb before you have dependence. <laughs> this one, they call Brutus. You smoke it and you listen to you 2 uh, This one, they call the Special Olympics because it's not a joke. And... Um, <laughs> My history, my favorite drug is Adderall. Uh, I love Adderall. Anybody else? Yes. Round of applause if you like it. I, I, I'm going to talk to Pfizer. I mean, that was like 80% of the crowd. Yeah. I took 10 Adderall and learned Latin in one evening. I'm fluent. Little known fact, Sully Sullenberger. He was on Adderall. You know, if he wasn't on Adderall, he, you know, it could have been another 9-11, you know? No, he could have... All right, come on, all right. All right, cue that don't ad lib 9-11 joke. Um, what's your favorite drug, pot? You're, you said you were a pothead. Why do you like pot? That's the best one. 
Yeah. It's the yeah. best one. It's the healthiest one, I suppose. Right? It's the best one. I don't know. It always makes me feel stupid. <laughs> I don't know. Stupid and paranoid. Uh, but if you, if you take drugs for long enough, you end up on the show Intervention. Anybody seen that show? Yeah. Intervention is a show about interventions. What a surprise. And intervention is basically like a surprise party, but it's better because you're ruining somebody's life. <laughs> and uh, basically on the show, it's a bunch of alcoholics who live in a trailer park who gang up on one of their friends because he started doing heroin. And they're like, we got to get Dave because he's having more fun than us. <laughs> and it's a group of the most incomprehensible, illiterate people who can't memorize a 40-second personal speech. So they re try to read it to him. They blindside him. They get him in a room, and they start speaking. They're like, uh, Daryl, ever since you had been done, start doing no heroin. <laughs> It's like I don't been known you no more. We used to make jello. Why we don't make jello no more? Will you accept the help that we have today? And somebody else comes on. They're like, Daryl, remember that summer we checked rocks at a tree stump? <laughs> that was fun, man. And I, I was in wearing a shirt and I got burnt redder and a cooked crab in a crock pot and went home and Mama Dukes was like, I don't want no engine skin flagging up in my double wide. Get out. That was fun. Will you accept our help? Then the heroin addict has a chance to speak and he's the most lucid one on the show. He's just like, look, ever since I found heroin, you people have become tolerable. All right? Will you accept my library card and take some accountability for your intellectual difficulties? I, uh, you guys watch TV? You watch TV? A little bit. What do you watch? Oh, Bob's Burgers. Yeah! Yeah, Bob's Burgers. Uh, for anybody over 30, it's a cartoon for adults. Uh, Eugene Meerman's on it. He's a comedian. He's funny. Uh, yeah, it's funny. It's kind of... Uh, say funny, it's, uh, how would I put it? Uh, I'm moving on. Uh, <laughs> moving on. I, I watch Cops. I, I love the show Cops. Anybody else like the show Cops? I watch a lot of it. I watch a lot of it. I'll give you some advice. Uh, if you're going to carry crack, like you do, um, wear a shirt. Just wear a shirt. It's really not that hard. Every single suspect in cops has no shirt on. They're talking to the police like, I just got home from work. I was in the shower when she said, where do I work? I'm unemployed. Yeah, taking a shower. Yo, Janine, yo, Janine, tell him I ain't stab you. Tell him I ain't stab you. She's lying. She always has knife wounds. There's always crack lying around. The police are like, is that your crack? He's like, nah. What about this crack? Nah, that's not mine either. What about the crack in your pockets? These aren't my pants. You want to find crack? Just put on somebody else's pants. Uh, yeah. Then they're like, the cops search you, and then they ask you if they mind if they search you. They ask after they've rifled through your pockets. And the suspects are always like, no, I don't mind. I, 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 I like prison. Uh, <laughs> do you mind if I search you? Yes, I do. You know they're not searching you for your benefit. They never, con they never conduct a search. I've never seen it where they're like, you know, we happen to find some Paul Simon tickets. <laughs> You know, we also found some pretty impressive transcripts and a medical license. Oh, well, I guess I'll be on my way. I'm late for surgery. No. They're like, you know, we found bone fragments on your meat cleaver. Where'd you get it from? The White House? What are all these pictures in your wallet? Are they your victims? They were on cops. They were rifling through some minorities' pockets like they always are. They found two heroin syringes. He was like, I don't know how they got there. Then he just looked off onto the horizon like he was on heroin. <laughs> Not really an academy performance. 
you got to act like you didn't know they were there. I'm sorry. Like, personally, if I found two syringes in my pockets, I would never wear pants again. The police would be like, why are you naked on the playground? Because they ain't on drugs, motherfucker. That's why. Because my dick's out in front of kids because I live above the influence. Shit. The, uh, the suspects are like, if you, uh, if you watch it, they have, they're really aggressive before the handcuffs are on, but they're totally different after the handcuffs. It's like a 180. Before the handcuffs are on, they're like, don't touch me. I'll kill you. I'll kill your whole family. Then the handcuffs are on. They're like, can you scratch my nose? <laughs> can I have a sip of water? My pinky toe hurts. Ouch. They were like, the suspect on the bike is wearing a backpack. Sometimes people conceal items they've stolen in a burglary in their backpack. We're going to stop them. What happened to innocent until proven guilty? A lot of people wear backpacks. I wear a backpack. Well, I steal shit, but like a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people wear backpacks. That's just like saying, oh yeah, that suspect has two eyes, used to see colors, typical in drug use. You know? That guy has two legs. They use two legs to move towards 80 pounds of PCP. And that guy over there, that suspect is wearing clothes. Yeah, they do that in between acts of necrophilia. So. Yeah. And uh, I was watching an outtake from cops. The whole outtake was some guy who's like, yeah, I threw the rock gently at her car. <laughs> I love that diplomacy. I mean, he could be a politician. Uh, like, uh, did you blow his head off? No, I did some light cranium remodeling. <laughs> I reappropriated his wallet, and then I graciously stabbed him to sleep. So, you know. And uh, growing up, we had the D.A.R.E. program. Anybody else in the D.A.R.E. program? Yep. Anybody who went through the D.A.R.E. program who doesn't currently do drugs? <laughs> Yep, C zero. <laughs> the program was to keep kids off drugs. They said, just say no. I've been around illicit drugs for 25 years. Not once have I heard somebody say no. <laughs> Not once. I've seen people get skipped in the rotation, you know, like, he knows what he did, making the blunt all wet. Um, that's a generational thing. I've seen a lot of people who should have said no. Uh, 15 years ago, I was cut, uh, cutting up lines at a get-together, and um, it wasn't cocaine. Don't judge. It was ketamine. And uh, I was cutting up lines, and I was like, how many lines should I make? And some guy was like, uh, there's four of us. Can't you count? And I was like, but Francine's pregnant. And he was like, so? I was like, all right, I'll make five lines. <laughs> Guess she's snorting for two. I don't know. I uh, had a friend who went to jail for trafficking heroin, and I ran into him after he got out of prison. And then he got my contact info and started messaging me a bunch. And I have nothing against this kid. He was always nice to me, you know, friendly. But I didn't want to hang out with him. Just didn't want to get involved in that mess. But he is kind of a get-out-of-jail-free card. You know, if you're ever just standing next to him, the cops would be like, did I just see you smoke crack? No, you saw me share crack with, let me introduce you to Paul. He is out of prison for trafficking heroin. So while you two get acquainted, I'll be making my way. I would use that shit all the time. Do you know how fast you're going? He sells heroin. So. I do respect cops for one reason, though. They have to respond to 911 calls. YouTube it if you haven't. Uh, they're ridiculous 911 calls. And they have to take you seriously if you take the call seriously. Well, you could do, you could call 911 for anything, just take it seriously, like 911, what's your emergency? I broke my arm, where are you located? I'm at the emergency room. <laughs> 911, what's your emergency? I bought a gun to shoot a cop, send help. They need to show up to that shit. 
What's your emergency? Uh, yeah, I'm on the phone with you while driving. What should I do? 911, what's your emergency? I ran over a bunch of toddlers, but I'm late for bingo, so figure it out. What's your emergency? I didn't save a bunch of money by switching to Geico. 911, what's your emergency? Yeah, I just came and my girlfriend won't leave. I watch uh, Maury. Do you guys watch Maury? What's Maury? You clearly don't have 14 kids, whoever said that. What's Maury? It's just, uh, I've never been asked that. I really, uh... It's a platform by which to exploit both very dim-witted people uh, and their children without their consent because <laughs> the babies aren't old enough to speak. And they're like, well, Shonda fucked 109 men during ovulation. And we're trying to figure out who's the father. Here's the picture of this poor kid who will clearly never make it into college because of this show. The kid can't even talk yet. He has no memories of this. And then they exploit him. I was watching Maury originally to get material. Uh, and it's so scripted. Like, who is writing this shit? I watched Maury. I was watching the, the best of the worst white trash ever. And they're like... Uh, Hey, yeah, my name is Bubbles, because at my 10th birthday party, I drank all the champagne and blew a clown. And my mom, my mom needs to get out of my business, because he made me a balloon hat out of the condom we didn't use. I suck a dick a day, Maury. You know, and then somebody else is like, I'm o -O ozone because I keep things hot, I got a big hole, and I fuck on an air mattress. I dropped out of school to focus on my career, because I don't cut quarters, Maury, I work them. Shit. My name's Brianna, and I don't like white boys, Maury, but you rich, so I grind my stink on you like Brianna Cracker. Shit. My Facebook depicts pics of me sucking six tricks, dick slick to get my quick fix. Oh, snap, Maury. It's the most quotable show. If you want a good quotation, forget Faulkner, Shakespeare, forget all of them. Just go watch Maury. Where else are you going to get... Yeah, yeah, I got a question for the chick with the dick. No, the other one. Why you ain't had been done try to get no education? You know, if you start all that, ee, in the back of a limo, ee, and your mama. Thank you. It's great. You ever notice that if you take an inspirational quote and attribute it, to the wrong person, it changes the quote entirely. Like, I have a dream, the Association for Narcoleptics. <laughs> you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, the DC sniper. <laughs> Fuck me, Magic Johnson. Um, uh, it's not whether you fall down, it's whether you get back up, Christopher Reeve. <laughs> Ow, ow, get over it, walk it off. Uh, even if you're on the right path, you'll get run over if you just sit there, Princess Diana. Uh, uh, the harder I work, the luckier I get, Ted Bundy. Winners keep playing until they get it right, Dale Earnhardt. Um, all right, that's a generational thing. The old, older generation, there's generational differences. I don't know, uh, the baby boomers are retiring now, destroying the entire socioeconomic infrastructure of this country, and they are some of the most arrogant, not the people in here, arrogant people <laughs> I have ever met. You hear these people like, 
talk down to us. Like, your generation is so entitled. You think the world just owes you something. You know, you don't try to earn anything at all. You're entitled. Where's my social security check? Have we <laughs> bled that dry yet? Yeah, we're entitled. That's why we're bogarting all the unpaid internships. <laughs> Thanks for the charitable tuition rates. Yeah, so, and they're like, well, at least our generation protested the war. That's because there was a draft. That's, that's like saying the Jews protested the Holocaust. It's not an accomplishment. There's a war now you can protest. You know, pack up your bald spot and your B.O. and go play hand drums somewhere. <laughs> Our generation has to apply to like 400 jobs just to get part-time. And they lecture us like, you know, when I was your age, I had to apply to literally, literally two jobs before. The pension benefits, 401k, a white picket fence, a sunset. It was the same day that I met your mother. We went on a blind date to a drive-in theater, and we were married before the credits. <laughs> then we gave birth to you in the popcorn bucket, and I never saw either of you ever again. And I burned through four more wives with five more alimonies because I'm responsible. <laughs> yeah. And I still work at the lumber mill. And they're hiring, but you show no interest in putting on a helmet and staring at wood for 50 years. You're not thinking. My mom was like, Dan, Dan, you're very irresponsible. I was like, really not? Because I'm a drug addict with your credit information. So who's really irresponsible? But there's going to come a time when uh, some of our parents run out of their inadequate savings and it'll be around the time we reach our peak earning potential. And uh, they're gonna move back in with us and I would, uh, I would love to welcome my parents into my house with the same grace and deference they've treated me with. It, like install floodlights right at their geriatric pillow and stumble home at four in the morning Hit the lights up. Is that the light? No, it's me. Hit the pavement. There's shit to be done. You think you could just lie around flatlining in a Craftmatic adjustable bed? There's shit to be in. Uh, not under my roof. Shovel the driveway, Spina Bifina, you know? <laughs> shit to be done. Where's your life alert button? You lost eye, you would lose your head if it wasn't held on by loose skin. All right? Go shovel the driveway, and you better not fall, because if you fall, I don't want you to get snowed on. I don't want your daughter-in-law parking on you. If you get parked on, don't think you can come back in here, all right? What? Why? Why? Because I said so. All right. Look, you guys were great. My name's Dan McCourt. You can find me on YouTube, M-C-C-O-R-T. No you, everybody puts a U in it. And uh, I want to thank all you for coming out. You guys were a great audience. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks again. Here's Dwayne. Dan McCourt, everybody makes a fucking noise!